I grew up in a very large family. My daddy was a pastor, and my mother and daddy had nine children, and so I have a lot of siblings. And I grew up uh, sitting in church most of my life. That's kind of what we did. But uh, I remember one night, uh, I think I was around three years of age, I was sitting on the front row. I can tell you where I was sitting, at the end of the bench, and I was watching my daddy as he was preaching that night. And he announced his text. I couldn't tell you anything he said except this. He said that Solomon asked for a gift, and God graciously granted it. That's the part I got of the sermon. And he began to speak about wisdom, and I don't know what all he spoke about, but it was about King Solomon. All I could think about from the moment I heard him say that Solomon asked for a gift and God graciously granted it, that I wanted to do that too. And so that night, we lived just directly across the parking lot from the church, and after the service that night, my mother took us home, and I went upstairs on a mission. I went up to my bedroom, and I remember getting my PJs on and going over and kneeling at the end of the bed. And I remember being so passionate and so serious about it, and I began to beg God for a gift. I begged him, would you please give me a gift like you gave that king my daddy was talking about tonight? Please. And I believed with everything in me that I was going to be something when I woke up. Well, the next morning, obviously, I woke up, and I was nothing different. There had Nothing had changed. But I don't know the exact time frame, but some weeks later, my mother said, that she came in to, from the kitchen and um, she found me on the piano bench playing my sister's recital piece. And that was the first time ever I remember music coming alive to me. And Mother said that when she came in that I was playing in the key of G flat, which um, is a little bit of a complicated key for, you know, for most musicians or most of us. And um, she said that I was repeating the recital piece that had been being played before I got there. And I, she said to me, how did you know how to do that? How did you know how to do that? And she said, I looked up and said, well, she was playing and I wanted to play too. I was always fascinated by this ability that was unconventional that she had. And so, of course, once we were married, I began to question her. I wanted her to tell me this story. And it was very interesting because she actually, to tell me the story, took me back to the little church on Bud Road in New Albany, Indiana, and showed me the places. And it was, um, it was very emotional for me to see these spots where she was sitting on the front seat, and she told me the story of her dad preaching this sermon about a gift that God gave King Solomon and took me over to the empty parsonage. In those days it was empty. And we walked over there and went upstairs to the bedroom where she had knelt down and pulled out the drawer and got her PJs and got down. And I, probably the thing that struck me um, that she told me was when she began to ask God for that gift, she ironically lifted her 10 fingers as she counted the pleases off. Please, 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 and lifted all 10 fingers into the air as she was asking, please God, give me a gift. But I remember some years later, I think I was 11 or 12, maybe 12 years of age, and I was riding with my dad down the road and I was talking to him about that prayer. And I said, Daddy, do you think that, that maybe playing the piano is the gift that I got? And he said, honey, I think it is. And I remember as it was all I could think about from, from the time I was tiny, um, everything that I heard musically affected me. And I remember um, my mother said that before I went to first grade, I would play six and eight hours a day. And I would hear chords maybe that a pianist would play, and I would be so fascinated by it that I had to find that chord. And so I would work until I could find what I heard. We would ask her mom about her taking lessons because she never had a formal teacher um, take all the mechanics of EGBDF and FACE when she would go to these teachers, she would basically ask them to play the song and she could duplicate it back to them, which was very frustrating to teachers, you know. And uh, so, the, I mean, finally the teacher, one of them called her mom and said, don't bring this little girl back. I don't know what to do with her. <laughs> I would have loved to have had the privilege to go back and study music in a more professional manner. Uh, 
To be honest, I wrestled with that. When I became an adult, I really uh, was raised, we didn't have a lot of means, not a lot of money. It was a different day back then, and I didn't have a real good option to go to college. But one day, the Lord and I were having a conversation, and I remember saying to the Lord, uh, you know, why Why did I never get the opportunity? Because once you ra start raising your family and children, you know, school becomes less and less important to you as a mother because you've got this big responsibility of your children. And I remember saying, I, you know, I don't understand why I didn't get the, the opportunity to go back and maybe study and get a bachelor's, maybe a master's, maybe a PhD in piano performance. Wouldn't that have been amazing? And no, I didn't hear an audible voice, but in my heart, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, Kim, had you gone back and studied and gained all of these accolades through learning, your teachers would have gotten all of the credit. And this is a gift I gave you. And I wanted you to give this gift back to me. And I wanted you to praise me with this gift. And I didn't want anybody else to get the glory for what I gave you. And so I plan to spend and spend out my days, the rest of my days, um, giving it everything I've got and giving every bit of praise back to Jesus Christ because I know that He's the only one that's worthy.